First, this is fusion in action. Okay, weird. Next, here's fission used in all existing nuclear power plants. And fission is the splitting of uranium and plutonium. Think of Alka-Seltzer. Fizz, fizz, fission, breaking apart and expanding. Unfortunately, it breaks apart into toxic nuclear waste, which we still don't quite know what to do with. Now, today's announcement, fusion, the opposite of fission, forcing something together instead of breaking it apart. Forcing together the fuel, hydrogen isotopes, something we have been doing forever. Actually, the sun has. A fusion reaction at the core of the sun fuses hydrogen atoms into helium, and the sun has been a pretty reliable power source for four billion years. So, why not put the sun in a little bottle on Earth? We've been trying. Not easy. The hard part, getting temperatures of about 150 million degrees without melting everything in the fusion labs, and slamming hydrogen isotopes into each other with unimaginable violence. And the fuel for fusion is not plutonium, it's not uranium. It's right there. Seawater. It's loaded with hydrogen. You can get as much energy out of a single glass of seawater as you can out of a barrel of oil. Isn't that easy? Not really. We actually need isotopes of hydrogen. One isotope is deuterium. Easy, abundant. The other is tritium. Not easy. There's only about 44 pounds of tritium on Earth. So again, not easy. But remember, in a fusion reactor, fuel supply is not radioactive, there's no greenhouse emissions, there's no toxic nuclear waste, there's no meltdown risk. So why haven't we done this before? We have. Fusion reactions have been achieved a number of times, but they have always needed much more energy to smash the atoms together than they have produced in output power. Bad, bad. The holy grail has always been to produce more energy than you use in creating the energy. And now that we seem to have achieved that, the goal is to keep a fusion reaction going in a sustainable and controllable way for a long period of time. After all, if the sun can do it, why can't we? I'm science editor Brian Hackney, KPIX 5 News.